Hello everyone and welcome to the Eurobowl preview show for Wales 2018. Uh, I guess after the shenanigans of yesterday, the first thing I should check is can people hear me? So we'll just wait for the eight second delay for that to come through in the message. I'll type as well, can you hear me? Yes, excellent. Yeah. It's working. That's more of a surprise than it not working. So, uh, with me today, I have uh, just above me the excellent Andy Davo. Uh, now I need to work out. Yes, I got it right. To the side of me is the excellent Joe Manji. And Hi. Up there is the excellent Dishfa Dan. Oh. So, um, as I was saying to these guys just before we came on air, big thanks to Andy Davo for uh, helping me get all this set up. Uh, he's one of the guys in an unusual position whereby he's uh, not only a really good and experienced tabletop player, but he also does a huge amount of streaming uh, here on Twitch and also on YouTube. So we'll be giving him some uh, good plugs. Go subscribe to his uh, YouTube channel and uh, he will buy you between 10 and 20 beers in Cardiff. That's why. I <laughs> it's 20 and 30 that. now, actually. I'm, I'm really that's, after... That's, yes, how much he wants those, <laughs> <laughs> that's how much he wants those subs yeah so excellent so um as you can see uh, right in the top corner we have the running order for today we've got tons and tons of stats and so my job is to basically ask these experts here uh, and also deep dad's joined us uh, for <laughs> their opinions on what's going on uh so for those of you that don't know uh andy is playing for wales joe is playing for england and deep dan is in the loser competition of the <laughs> No, I'm just joking. So anything just like that. He's been ripping into me all day, so it's about time to have uh, some revenge. So let's start with Austria against Poland. So here are some lovely stats. Um, so we have uh, Chorjerub undead against Reska, also playing undead. Outcast, I think, is our only Bretonian player in the Euro Bowl against Tillman's Dwarves. Smorg's Lizardman is playing Rovers Wood Elves. Snake Eyes Norse against Mewash's Chaos Dwarves. Loot Grips Chaos Pact against Warrior 1980s Norse, Turian Dark Elves against Domingo's Lizardmen, Glenta's High Elves against Slimax Dark Elves, and Schiefer Skaven against Leonex Amazon. So, Joe, starting with you, Austria and Poland, how do you think those guys will get on? Uh, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, <laughs> Yay! Brilliant. I have, I have <laughs> met some of the Polish guys recently. We went to uh, Hungary and some of them travelled over for a tournament there. But I do not remember which one is is which. So uh, uh, I can only say this is two of the two of the middle nations. Um, with not who just don't necessarily turn up every single year. So it's not easy to tell like which players they bought with them each time. So one thing I have noticed about Poland is since uh, Games Workshop relaunched the game, they seem to have come into it a bit stronger. And um, with them winning hosting rights for. Um, the next tournament, which is in two years because it's World Cup year next year. What do you guys feel about their um, progression? Well, I think it'd be interesting to see what they do uh, this time around, because last time around, uh, along with us, we didn't do as well as we would like to have done. So I think this is probably a proper marker because they should be able to turn up with a full and, and quality team this time. Um, I'm very interested to see how Poland do. Yeah, it's interesting to see as well. I mean, just looking at their ratings and things in terms of their NAF ratings, it looks like they've got a pretty solid team there with like 50, everyone is at above 50% win rate, up to 70%. So, and that seems to be the handle, doesn't it, really, in terms of um, the viability. I guess what well, the question is, is have they just been playing in Poland in yeah, smaller so tournaments or have travelled a lot? So. Right, this is one of the, the wider questions I was going to bring up because... In terms of actual numbers of game played for Poland, it isn't a huge amount, but like you said, they, they do have some, some decent numbers uh, on a win rate percentage. But a lot of their tournaments do seem to be quite local. And I'm wondering if that's less to do with their willingness to play Blood Bowl, because it's obviously quite an effort to, to get these people to, to come all the way over to another country to play this game. Mm -hmm. Is it a case of just maybe there aren't enough tournaments around that area? And maybe what can we do <clears> to support that? Yeah, well, the Euro Bowl is only going to serve to the next Euro Bowl is only going to serve to help support that. Certainly, um, it's from I think from an English perspective, without 
it's a, definitely a really appealing place to go, personally anyway, in terms of uh, of a of a foreign tournament. So hopefully, and I think that sort of international or European recognition would certainly help um, build support for the tournament scene. Yeah, I'm excited to go. My missus is Polish, so uh, can't wait. Oh, oh perfect. <laughs> I'll be there. They did. A, they posted on Facebook. I think it was back in the beginning of the year. Uh, a video of uh, a tournament they were running, and it looked absolutely oh, yeah. glorious. So yeah, I'm definitely interested in that next year as well. So, given yeah, there's also a bit of um, a bit of World Cup representing going on here as well with Tojo and. Some of the other guys are those the, some of the chaps who are helping to organise next year's World Cup. Yeah, Tony Drub is the um, NAF vice president and the main organiser of the World Cup. So yeah, it's uh, nice to see him actually playing the game rather than just <laughs> That's right. doing all the active. He did ask me to do a little shout out as well. Uh, World Cup 2019 tickets are on sale. Uh, forget about the World Cup for now, guys. This is all about Euro Bowl. Wait until next week, and then you can get all your World Cup stuff sorted. But yeah. five more days, and then it's. Down to uh, that's right. Work <laughs> so then, let's move on to the next match, which is possibly the most one-sided encounter in Eurobowl history. It's Italy <laughs> against the Dragons. Um, <laughs> Andy, is yeah. this going to be anything other than a bit of a bloodbath? Um, there are a couple of coaches I think that play for the Dragons that definitely could um, prevent. Uh, pre- Prevent, provide a surprise um, to team captain Hobnell. He knows what he's doing. He's also playing a good race. And undead dark elves. Uh, personally, I don't. I don't go all weak at the knees when I have to play undead. Sometimes it comes down to a bit of the mighty blow from the mummies, but he could, he could definitely win that one. Um, Tribble is crazy enough to pull off some uh, some results with the uh, wood elves, but Spartaco is a very good player. Yeah, yeah. Um, and well, there's a tight elves is an interesting matchup. <laughs> Yeah, and Verbal's, uh, he's more than capable of uh, putting performance out, so yeah, yeah that's an interesting game. Yeah, I don't know the other coaches, I'm afraid, but I do know those two, or three, so maybe. Oh, Martin, I know. Um, Martin's still uh, learning and getting, grips, get, getting to grips with the game, so um, I think there's three potentials in there for me. Yeah. That said, Italy are a really very strong team. They've got a number of the people who were in the room at Italy itself. And lots and lots of experience. So, you know, you fancy Italy against almost anyone, um, and a relatively experienced Dragons team, perhaps not going to be the uh, toughest matchup. Yeah, so Italy finished uh, second last year in <coughs> Portugal. Uh, that's potentially returned to form. It's their best finish since Denmark 2012. Uh, they've won it three times themselves. So, um, I think it's probably fair to say, Joe, that Italy alongside France and England, who we'll talk about a bit later, are probably the, the favourites for the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. They are tend to be the big three. They're uh, the three, the only three teams that have won it more than once. Um, and Spain have won it once. And apart from that, nobody else has won it. Um, and, you know, you've got your dark horses of Denmark, but your top three are, are uh, England, France and Italy. I think... Potentially one of the concerning things about the Dragons is between them, uh, they've played the races that they're taking uh, 103 times. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, Italy have 60 caps, let alone games played in Eurobowl. They've got 60 yeah. caps between them. So they're definitely bringing some really experienced uh, players. But Moloch on Dark Elves is a, a Eurobowl rookie. He is, but look at his NAF win rate. 63% is very good. Insane. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. It's terrifying. Yeah. There's no, there, there is no weak point, is there really, within that group? Um, is that the 62.7 is the lowest percentage win rate? That's ridiculous. I wonder who's got the, the worst, as though you said, the best overall average. I, I, that's got to be in the top three. Definitely got to be in the top three for me. Yeah. Well, um, France uh, EDF Blood Bowl, the France Eurobowl website, is doing a countdown uh, to Eurobowl based on that number, the average um, NAF ranking. So you'll be able to go onto that website, and they're doing a, a huge rundown uh, article for each team in the in the draw. So you'll be able to see exactly what that list is. And, and uh, check that out. yeah, can, those... you, can you link that to the chat, Joe? Because I'd quite like to look at that. That'd be yeah, good. sure. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Those guys are fantastic. Uh, Galantil, who's been um, 
who's been writing those uh, is hopefully going to try and join us a bit later. Um, he's getting home a little bit late from work. Uh, he's the French captain uh, this year. Um, and uh, we're reposting some of them um, in uh, on the Tackle Zone as well. But um, oh, we're, well, I'm translating to English because Google Translate doesn't always do the best job. Uh, unless some of these teams really are playing with killer whales. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's great. Uh, the I, Google I, Translation I for Orcs. Is, but... It's Orcs. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. So I'm not quite sure what, uh, what exactly is yeah, going on there. Makes but... sense. <laughs> but uh, we're we're um, we're deliberately leaving it a few days behind. So if you want to see it first, they're really really good. Especially now he's into the top ten. The the breakdown is very detailed. He goes into individual players, and uh, especially how they might do against the French team. Yeah, so the stats are great. He's like he's broken it down. Like what's the record against people between this bracket of the Afri um, rankings and stuff like that? It's, yeah. uh, it's really good. So Valopia was just asking about the dragons a little bit more. Can we explain like how they fit in? Oh, so yeah, they're just yeah. the odd team, right? That's right. So the dragons are a wildcard team. So in order to make sure that all the nations that want to participate uh, are able to, uh, rather than uh, dropping one out if there's an odd number, uh, we basically have a fill-in party team. So uh, I was lucky enough to be on the party team for Belgium, uh, which were called the Pirates. And then in Sweden, they were the Vikings. Uh, and this year they're the dragons, so they like to have a bit of a theme uh, going on there. So they're not flat earthers. Um, they're uh, they're a, they're a good fill-in team. I think them. we've gone down, Dan. Um, the Twitch page has got an error code. That the Twitch machine got unplugged. Oh, oh I've still got it up. Uh, have you oh, used maybe. A four, is it a four oh four error? I'll just reload the page and see if it's, it's working for me. It's a 404 error, it just okay. follows. No, it's not me. It's me. Continue. We're oh, good. Oh, no. no, but it's good to check out. Guys, if anything does go wrong, do let us know in chat straight away because uh, I'm super new at this, so there's every chance everything could all uh, go down at any point. So, on to uh, the third team, which is Sweden against Greece. And I see we've got Pippad in the chat as well, so he's going to be very interested uh, to see our thoughts on this. So moving to the stats. Uh, so Pippad's Undead are against uh, Nyctis' uh, Cursed Dwarves, uh, Meliscus' Necromantic against Assassin's Dwarves, Pelevin's Humans against Kana's Wood Elves, Oz Norse against Mongols' Orcs, Coma's Dark Elves against Kakazi's Dark Elves, In for the Pain's Lizardmen against Doko One's Necromantic, uh, which is always, I think it's always tricky for lizards because you never know when that claw is going to go off. Lockman's Pro Elves against Optimus Prime's Undead and Skull's Wood Elves against Kiav's Pro Elves. The first thing I look at are that, and I think, I think for me, the Swedish team is stronger, but all of those matchups, I was just grimacing. I was just like, I don't think the Swedish have got particularly strong matchups there. Um, Joe, what do you think about the matchups? Yeah, absolutely. It's a very good point. Um, I think uh, Pro Elves, Wood Elves is a, is a nasty one for them. Under Pro Elves is absolutely horrible. Um, yeah. Necromantic Lizard Men, also bad. Orc Norse, I mean, basically you're just relying on the Snow Troll there. If that doesn't work, you lose that game. Um, so, yeah, Humans, this is, you know, Wood Elves is as bad as it gets for them because they can actually kill up with you. So, yeah, you're, you're right. It's a very, very tough game. Yeah. I mean, the I'll... first thing I'll say about this is that it's just amazing to see Greece uh, participate. Like whenever a new nation plays the Euro for the first time, it's just just an amazing experience, and you often see the in that country just explode just from that one attendance because people realise what a great community you have and what a great tournament it is, and they just want to be part of it and want to play more. So that's the first thing. So the main thing I'm just excited about to you know meet some Greek people for the first time and see see them make their debut. Yeah, I agree. Um, I I think the Swedish Swedes will win this round but I think they'll be relying on experience. I don't think they're going to get a massive landslide win, um, which probably means they avoid Italy in the second round, um, which is probably okay. Yeah. Sweden are a, a sort of dark horse team. Like they, You probably don't think they're going to win, but they're more than capable of beating anybody who could win. Um, I remember in Sweden, we played them in round six, um, England. Uh, and that's when they had a few of their players doing the organising uh, event as well. So they've got some some pretty good players. 
Um, I don't know if he's a captain this year, but uh, Meliscus, uh, I've played him a couple of times. He's a very, very good player. Yeah, so exactly to that point, uh, three uh, three years ago uh, in Austria, Sweden finished ninth. Then they were seventh in Belgium and fifth in Sweden. So they're not just able to beat anyone, but they're probably looking to knock on the door themselves. Yeah, M Meliscus is captain. Um, the one thing that this doesn't show actually is um, the NAF ranking with the particular races in Meliscus, I think was in the top 20 uh overall Otst is also very very highly ranked and every single person on that list um i think would give up both you know, anyone who's good a game there's there'd be no easy game which doesn't matter who you draw i like that team because it's it's all eight players are very good mm -hmm. yeah excellent point so, yeah that's the worry if you're um a team like italy or france or england if you're trying to win the event it's like you you know you're going to play those other teams at some point you don't worry about that because you, you can't avoid it but the games that you you worry about the games like um, sweden or wales because they're just um sort of luck of the draw you can avoid them completely but they're very losable rounds as well so if you just get two of those tough games coming in there then it, it can really throw a wrench in when when you go into a game like that joe do you um sort of approach it differently uh, and in terms of this this larger team competition as well where you've got eight players on a side mm -hmm. how do you approach it within that context do you it sort of innately play more defensively or for the draw yeah, pretty much um the the general rule at Eurobo is a draw is worth more than it is in a, a team sorry an individual tournament because yeah. uh basically to win an individual, individual tournament you need to go 510 or um 600 basically maybe 501 if you're lucky uh but in eurobowl that's completely out of the window you're not playing for yourself you're not playing to finish the very top you've got a com combination of eight results it's position as well as points that you're getting for yourself so it becomes much more valuable which means that sort of defensive style of play becomes uh equally more valuable yeah so, Joe, I believe in previous tournaments, it was mainly uh, based around the total points scored through the team with a sure. win bonus. Uh, but this year, it's a little bit different, isn't it? How do you think yeah. that would change uh, people's approach? Um, I don't think it would change the approach in the actual games themselves, um, because there was always a point bonus point for winning the round. So winning the round was always something you were aiming for. It was something in the back of your mind. So in terms of like a, a micro level game thing, it's not going to change too much. It could definitely change the winner though. Like uh, if this point system had been in place the last tournament, uh, then France would have won and not England. Uh, just purely based on exactly the same results being played. So uh, yeah, it's very interesting to see what happens. Yeah, excellent. So moving on to the uh, next uh, matches. So I've grouped these two together because I like to kind of call it the battle for hosting rights. So the way that hosting <laughs> works is the country that hasn't yet hosted Eurobowl that finishes highest in a Eurobowl gets to host the next one. Um, so we know the next one will be Poland because they finished well last year. And uh, Scotland are kind of ever present on that list. They always seem to be sort of favourites to, to get hosting rights, but never quite make it. But Malta as well, after the year they had last year, um, seem to be quite good as well. So starting off with Scotland versus Ireland, uh, in what I like to call the Battle of the Hangovers, I think there will be some shenanigans <laughs> going on the Friday night. There might be some challenges, some drinking challenges to see how people uh, fare the next day. Um, so, Joe, uh, like you were saying with Greece, Ireland are another new entrant. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely. Absolutely fantastic to see. You know, the more the better, the bigger the event, the better. And it's just, you know, Euroball, as much as a competition, it's also just a great big party where people get to see each other and meet each other. And um, just fantastic to have more people. Yeah, definitely. Although, um, I think they're a really interesting team as well. Obviously, Dan Region 82 has organised it all, and he's a little bit, after doing all the organising, a little bit gutted that he's playing a club mate in the first round <laughs> and drawing his son in the first game. But I think there's some interesting players in there as well. And obviously, they they are um, lifted a little bit by people like Itchen and Beppe. And I think, to some extent, um, Longstride's 30% win rate is, is a little bit of a false statistic because he has been playing 
halfling solely for the last one. So we've got to give him a bit of. Uh, I think um, Ceremol is the dark horse on that team for me. Yeah. He's uh, um, a Sinai player, BB2, and he's, uh, in my well, mine and Dan's local league in London, the ECBBL. He is a very good player. Um, so yeah, and he's got a very favourable matchup as well. When I was with him in the first game, so I expect oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Well Still fancy the Scottish day for the first round there. I'm not sure. I think that's an interesting game. Like, yes, yeah, <laughs> Beppe, Saramol, you know, there's Itchin, some good players in there. I think it's a tough game for Scotland. Yeah, I mean, if, if Beppe, Saramol, and Itchin all win their games, you know, they're 3 8 to, uh, to an upset. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, Undead High Elves, that's a good matchup for Ireland. Um, Chaos Dwarfs, Dark Elves. I mean, that can go badly for Dark Elves. I mean, I, I don't hate it myself, but it's one of those games that can just get out of control really, really quickly. So, the Dark Elves. So, yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting game. So, what's, yeah. uh, what's everyone's predi predictions uh, for this one? Draw. Draw. <laughs> I'm going to go Scotland, so Joe can go Ireland. I will. Narrow Ireland victory. <laughs> first round, first win. Finally split. <laughs> I, I'm just glad it's actually on Saturday morning. Um, otherwise, it probably would be like uh, eight admin results, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, Raging um, Raging Eighty Two asked me why I wasn't featuring Ireland versus Scotland as the first match, and quite frankly, I don't think I'm going to let any of those guys anywhere near a webcam because <laughs> they're just they're way too expensive. The insurance will not pay out if I have to explain how it was damaged. <laughs> and they're either going to be stumbling around hungover before 11 a.m. or one minute past 11, they're going to be stumbling around drunk. So there's no there's no winning for me in that situation. So those guys have to stay away. So moving on to the second half of this uh, battle for hosting, we've got uh, the Netherlands against Malta. So um, we have so Sebstar Necromantic against Nella <coughs> Skaven. Chaotic Kemp's Undead against Metal Malta's Chaos Dwarves, Edwin Skaven against Zibu's Undead, Jelma's Norse against Real Maltese's Amazons, Crack and Crunch's Chaos Dwarves against Relex's Humans, Vince D's Dwarves against Men Zog Zogna's Wood Elves, Metmuff's Lizardmen against 086 Lizardmen, and another mirror match, Duke Jan and Janino on Dark Elves. So I met these guys, I met a lot of these Maltese guys. Um, at the Italian Team Cup, and they are they are really up for this. So, uh, Joe, how would you how would you fancy England playing Malta at some point? Um, well, I think we uh, feel confident, but they've got some reasonable players. You know, um, a couple of Owen and Rolex are totally totally good players, and a couple of the uh, Maltese players themselves are quite good as well. So, yeah, it's it's not it's no walkover definitely. Doesn't Rolex always play um, humans? And isn't isn't Rolex uh, Italian? He is. He's a freebooter, um, I believe. Uh, well, yeah. there's six Maltese on the team, there, right? I think so. I think it's Rolex so. and Owen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rolex and Owen are the uh, the Italians uh, from uh, from that freebooting in. Okay. Um, but I think again, just in terms of total NAF games played, it's actually quite even between these two teams. Hmm. Yeah, this uh, game is quite interesting. There's a couple of newer people there. Traditionally, the Dutch team has been made up of people who are just really old timers. The first ever Euro Bowl was in Holland. They've been around, for, um, but you can see a couple of new people in there. So it's quite interesting to see some, some Dutch new blood. Yeah. yeah, it's a shame the Sage isn't um, it, yeah joined in because he's uh, he's Dutch and he's a Blood Bowl two streamer. Would love to have seen the Sage yeah. at the uh, tournament. Absolutely, yeah. I definitely would have had him down uh, for one of the webcam matches uh, if he was able to make it. Um, because I think it's like Joe, you like you're saying about the stats. It's these numbers are all well and good, but they're obviously in a bubble. You don't know who's playing a lot of joke teams, which might lower their NAF rating. You don't know who's playing a lot of Blood Bowl Two or a lot of Fumble. Um, hugely experienced players, but without like strong NAF records. So. Yeah, some of these guys can be quite deceptive. Yeah, absolutely. So what do we reckon as to this one? What are our predictions? I fancy Malta in this one. I think they're uh, looking strong to win the hosting rights. I think they'll probably get a reasonable start here. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that, definitely. 
We were just saying, Andy, Motor or Holland to win the round. Oh, blimey, sorry, my my little girl came into the uh, into the room, um, and uh, ooh, I don't know an awful lot about the Holland team, uh, and I do know a bit of the Mal about Maltese Maltese team, uh, so I'm going to go with Malta. The Maltesers, as we call them. The <laughs> Maltesers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we went there. Oh, they're all good. I'm, I'm right. At least I blundered into it after. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, they went there too. They've got a player called the Real Maltesers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Regulars to uh, Andy's Twitch stream will know that uh, his little girl is actually the star of the show. Uh, Megatron, as we call her, is uh, actually, I think, always slightly off camera, giving him tips. <laughs> I think she, she does, and she normally sits fairly quietly uh, for at least twenty minutes, and she gets bored of how many mistakes I make. Yeah. Uh, I think. Yeah. So moving on to Finland against Hungary, and I have to admit these are two teams that I don't know very much about, other than Finland normally has the mighty beer bear on their team, which makes it a very noisy table to sit near. But he's actually in the European this year, which uh, means sort of the one Finnish player I do know about uh, isn't present. So, um, I want to shout out a quick shout out to Ratoga, who's playing on Dead. Um, I met him in Sweden, uh, top chap, and um, I hope he does really well. So, quick shout out to him. Yeah, the Finnish team, I mean, even if you don't know about them before you arrive, you'll definitely know about them. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are huge, they are loud, um, and they're going to have a lot of fun. So. <laughs> nice. Yeah, the Hungarian team, I've Played uh, Itzler uh, when we went to the Palinka Bowl this year, so he's a perfectly reasonable player. So yeah, they've got got some good players. One well, got some good, interesting players on there. So yeah, I don't really know who to pick on this two teams, but there's definitely some good matches going on. What What do you think about they've they've taken Slan as one of the eight? Mm. Um, what That's do you think? Interesting. Yeah, I, I think well, normally Doc Max is the only slam player because he's absolutely mental. Um, <laughs> but he hasn't taken it this year, so I think this is the only slam player. But yeah, that's right. It's the only slam, yeah. Joe, if you were to face slam, would you be sort of optimistic because they are not a particularly strong team? Or would you think this is a real opportunity for shenanigans? No, I'm quite happy playing slam. I think um, when you're an experienced player, you're less likely to get caught out. You just kind of try and weather the storm within six or seven turns, all the rerolls will be gone, they'll all be dead. So you just need to sort of survive that beginning part of the game and then, you know, try and win in the second half. Yeah. Because so. I played Doc Max's brother at Dungeon Bowl and he had a beautiful uh, frog wedding slant team. It's absolutely amazing. Oh, it's a great team. Yeah, great team. And um, he took guard on one of his catchers and four rerolls. And I thought, oh, hello, I'm in, I'm in for a game here. Yeah. <laughs> But it should only get to the guard on the catchers once because they have to yeah. punch it and preferably surf it. Yeah. yeah it's a matchup though for Slan against Dwarves, right? Yeah, it only has to work once and then that's pretty much game over. Dwarves yeah. have the uh, capacity to turn it around. Yeah. I think yeah. your uh, your co-host Jay Byrne has got some stories about that particular game, Dwarves versus Slan, <laughs> at this tournament as well. Well, what's <laughs> hilarious is that it's almost always the Slan team that he commissioned. <laughs> <laughs> so he's literally the master of his own demise yeah, his own hoist by his own batard that's it that's it I do like to think that that player would not have taken Slan had it not been for his team so he literally engineered his own downfall so who's going to win <clears throat> I go hungry that's my bet yeah, yeah. I'd lean towards Hungary. I played against them as the Pirates in Belgium, and they've definitely got some uh, some handy players. Um, and Finland are unlikely to sleep at all on the Friday night. So yeah, probably not going to help their chances. It's only whether Finland Finland's vocal play style will um, will disrupt their opponent's ability to think, <laughs> unsettle the Hungarians, um, and possibly <laughs> two or three tables around them. Um, for me, Finland is what makes you a bowl. That's why it's such a great party atmosphere because you've got all these guys coming down, um, and uh, they've got some they've got some handy players. Yeah, they're lovely guys as well. Usually, they bring a nice gift for people and stuff like that. It's a really nice time if you play Finland. So, yeah. Good luck I'm, to I'm I'm back in Finland. I've just gone through the racial matchups, and I think um, with the coaches and the racial matchups and the win rates, I think Finland actually will edge them. Yeah. I was just thinking the same thing, actually. I'd go Finland as well. 
Although I think the sun will be the doors. <laughs> yeah. Imagine taking a nice solid dwarf team, thinking, right, I can, I can just lock these games down. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> the last one. So moving on to uh, the next matchup, which is Germany uh, against Belgium. Now this is this is a really interesting matchup for me because both of these are heavyweight teams without sort of being in the top three. Germany, I think, always don't do quite as well as you expect them to. Um, whilst Belgium seem to have one really good year, and then the next time they have a really bad year, and then they have a really good year again. Um, so going through the individual matchups, <clears throat> we've got Sprinter Star Elves against Carlos's Lizardmen. Plan losses lizards against JJ Skaven. Uh, I think that's horrible for lizards, that Skaven. Just mm. oh, gotta run a shenanigans. Uh, Roshta shown Hockdal's Chaos Pact against Flabbergaster's Wood Elves. Arioso's Norse against Magic Tobe's Necromantic. Aventus Dwarves against the Tyson's Humans. Doc Max's Wood Elves against El Ombra's Dark Elves. Mm -hmm. Candlejack mm -hmm. Undead against the Great MC High Elves. Miko's Necromantic against Quetzal's Undead. There are some heavyweight matchups in there. Yeah, is that the only pack team as well that we see with Rosden? I think so. Yeah, I think so. It's an interesting pick. I always feel like they're always one skill short. So, yeah, there's definitely some experienced players on both teams there, and a lot of people they, they know each other quite well. Because being uh, Germany and Belgium very close, they sort of overlap some of the tournaments. So, yeah, be a, a cosy atmosphere, no doubt. <laughs> hmm. Interesting to see that uh, Mads, uh, the great MC, has got high elves. He's uh, one of Belgium's better players, so it's interesting that they've decided to give him one of the uh, flyer races. Yeah, 68.3% win rate with his 30 games with high elves. That's that's good for high elves because they don't mm, they, they don't, don't do, they don't have kind packages in a lot of tournaments. Yeah, but if you look at the overall NAF stats, um, he's the only person over 60% in that team. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's yeah. It, I've no doubt that he's quite capable with them, but it's interesting that they didn't get the, the strong races. Which would suggest they think they can do reasonably well because um, they're giving the uh, weaker coaches the, the better races to try and improve the team performance overall. Yeah. So they're not hanging out to dry the, the weaker coach. Yeah, so it's definitely a, a good strategy. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how the Doc Max uh, El Ombra match turns out. I think that's... Uh, that's a good match. That's going to be very close. Mm. A Wood Elves Dark Elves is a is a, a classic matchup as well. That's uh, as bad as bad as it gets. A Wood Elves. They don't really have bad games because they're cheats. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, evil cheating, horrible Wood Elves. But yeah, Dark Elves is the one game that you know they get a run for them. So what's our first of all? What do you think our predictions for this particular matchup? But then. Also afterwards, how do you think Germany and Belgium are going to do in the tournament as a whole? So I'll start with uh, Dan. I was. Is this a slightly? This is a slightly different German ma uh, team, isn't it, than the previous Euro Bowl? Am I right in saying that? Yeah, I think there's been some, quite a few changes, right? I think there's been some controversy, internal yeah. controversy within the community. And uh, Keithor, uh, who's traditionally always played for Germany, although he lives in Switzerland, has uh, yeah. decamped the Swiss team now. So. Right. Okay. I yeah, I mean, uh, so Candlejack's captaining, it, captaining, isn't he this time? Yeah. I, 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 um, I quite fancy the Germans here, and I reckon they could cause a few upsets. I, they've got really solid picks, with the exception maybe of Pat, but you know, Rostens is a solid player. So, yeah, I fancy the Germans. I reckon you maybe an interest outsider for a good top, solid top five. Yeah, that's, that sounds reasonable. Yeah. Uh, Germany and Belgium are both the sort of same sort of uh, area. They're kind of like Dan mentioned earlier about, about Belgium going a good uh, tournament and a bad tournament. They sort of yo-yo a bit within the tournament itself. Tend to, you know, win a game, then go up, up to the high tables and play a good team and then bounce back down again. Um, and so for Belgium and Germany, it's kind of the draw that they get is super important as their final place. If they, you know, if after this game the winner gets a bad game, a good game, thrashes someone and goes up the top, then they could just get smashed. Yeah. And then, yeah. For the rest of the tournament, but if they can inch their way up slowly, then they may end up finishing reasonably high. Hmm. Yeah. My prediction: Germany are going to win that. 
uh, 5-3 that round. Okay. Ooh, I like it. That's decisive. I like the decisiveness. I'm going for numbers now as well. So. Yeah, yeah, we've uh, escalated. Yeah. It's moved the game on. Quite a bit of time to think. Uh, <laughs> through the um, and I reckon there's, there's five or six games that go Germany's way in that. Uh, and therefore, I've gone for the safe bet, which is five. So on the prediction, though, I think uh, Leipziger is doing a uh, water bowl prize prediction yeah, for the, the total number of touchdowns scored across Eurobowl and Europen. That's correct. Yeah, Eurobowl and Europen. And yeah, then the tiebreaker is is the correct um, correct guessing correctly who is winning both. The tiebreaker, mm. like who is gonna? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, and six <laughs> people get it. Bang on. Oh, Quite a lot of people would... are just multiplying the number of uh, entrants by three. Yeah. And then... it's, it's, like, <laughs> it's kind of a reverse tiebreaker. Normally, <laughs> yeah, a tiebreaker is a time. more distinct or difficult number to pick than the original <laughs> thing. So you're picking a number out of a thousand for the top, and then you're picking three, possibly, for the tournament <laughs> as a tiebreaker. It's, yeah. it's interesting. <laughs> quite, quite a water bottle thing to do. So, so it's the it's taking part that counts, Jay. I've no way, not at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, okay. Have we just determined the difference between me and you today? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just yeah. before we move on to the uh, final four teams, I just wanted to give a quick mention uh, for Blocks fan, mainly because I was supposed to do it yesterday and totally forgot. So, if any of you guys are planning to attend Eurobowl this weekend, please do consider helping out Bloxfam, which is the uh, official NAF charity. The way that it works is it collects all of your old bits that you no longer want. So teams, boards, like some people have like 30 Blood Bowl boards. You don't need 30 Blood Bowl boards. Bring some to your bowl and uh, please hand it into a tournament organizer. And then what those guys do is they give it to uh, other tournaments which hold uh, raffles and auctions for charity. Um, so the main one in the UK is uh, Thread Bowl and they managed to raise over £5,000 mainly because they got people really drunk before they started bidding on stuff but that's still, <laughs> it's all good, it's all for charity so it's fine um, so if you are attending this weekend please do bring along any spares you have and then just hand them in to one of the tournament organisers so then moving on to the final four matchups so we have Portugal against Wales. So, oh. Andy, as a member of Team <laughs> Wales, go for it. Uh, okay. Um, so, we've got an uh, Asian guy playing Orcs uh, versus Hat. Uh, the Necromantic. Hat. Yeah. Yes. Um, Asian guy has played, um, he's actually played a bit of Orcs before. Um, so, I'll be interested to see how he gets on with that. Um, he normally can be quite, he should be solid. Um, Fisher, it's S, it's S Fisher. I'm not sure why it's not Shane Fisher there. Um, I don't actually know what S Fisher is playing. Yeah, sorry, that's my fault because I used to be look up on S Fisher and then the guys yesterday only put Fisher in, uh, which is why it hasn't worked. So oh, if you okay. give me a second, he is playing uh, Wood Elves. Oh, he's playing the Woodies. He's playing Wood Elves. Um, and just for the stats, he's got a 61% win rate with Wood Elves overall. Um, and so he's the team's best player then, isn't he? He's got four. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky I'm not on camera right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're right, Dan. I can't think of anybody else on the team. No, there's no others. Yeah. 30. Oh, it's 83%. Okay. Dionysian's all right. Actually, to be fair, Dionysian, I didn't realise what a great uh, run he's been having with Amazon so far. He's just started a YouTube uh, channel uh, where he's doing a lot of Blood Bowl 2 with Amazons um, and I thought it was quite interesting that he picked Amazons but 82% win rate with Amazons yeah, yeah it's good that is that's, yeah it's pretty yeah you can't, I have quite a small sample size so yeah he's, he's a good player yeah, it's all about once you get a sample size of above sort of 77 I think it's uh... <laughs> <laughs> incredible <laughs> it means something yeah it's it's suddenly, uh, That's it is. The so, 77 is the threshold, just so we're all clear on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I think um, S Fisher should be able to uh, nail that one. Uh, the following one is actually a really good matchup, I think, for the Dwarves, unless the Yeti has a game. Um, so we should be all right there as well. Um, 
So I think that's if you're the Orcs, I think we just try and make sure we don't lose that game. We should be able to go and win on the following two. Um, ugh, Chaos Dwarves versus Amazons isn't, isn't a very nice matchup. Um, Dune is their most experienced player by a long way as well. 803 NAF games, so that's a pretty tough one for Spencer. Yeah, yeah um, I mean, if Spence can pull something out, great. If not, um, you know, taking a draw there, we should be okay. Uh, the next one, Fluffy's probably our most inexperienced coach. Um, However, he's drawn the, the, the tie of the round in terms of how it should go because um, the Chaos undoubtedly will have the Minotaur, so deal with that, and then the yeah. rest of it's fine. That's actually should be straightforward. Um, um, then you've got some idiot on Dark Elves um, playing some Dwarves. Um, I'm hoping there that the um, the Dwarves aren't... It's not. It's the race. It's that game I don't like playing, actually, Dwarves uh, as Dark Elves. Um, but, I don't know, I should be all right there, hopefully. Um, you've got G. Coleman uh, playing Skaven. He is from Blood Bowl 2, although he has turned up and uh, played at some tournaments. I think he held... Was, he play, did he play you, Joe? Or has he played someone else's team? I can't remember. He might have done. Let me just check. Plays at UKT Studio and stuff, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he, he played someone for Team England last time round it. Um, uh, no, not me. He played someone, and I think he got a draw out of, of whoever it was. Okay. Um, he was quite pleased with that. So uh, he's definitely a solid player. Um, Skaven Widows is just going to be a, sh uh, a shootout, isn't it? That could, that could go anyway, to be honest. Yeah, it's a tough game. That's it. It's a tough game for because uh, they've got Skaven have got the built-in sure hands um, to start with on the thrower, and they've just got all of their own toys as well. So yeah, it's always been an interesting game. Yeah, and then the final one, uh, Twenty Phoenix is definitely one of our other very experienced, good coaches, and he's playing Undead against Dark Elves, um, and I. I'm backing him to get at least a draw in that game. So I think we can win that round. I absolutely think we, we, we can win that round. Um, I don't think it'll be a landslide, but I think it's definitely winning. So G. Coleman yeah. in chat has said that he played Jimmy and Podfrey at UKTC and got two draws. So that's uh, that's pretty good. Very good. Good, good, good. Yeah, I, I think we can, we can get a result there for sure. Yeah, I'd back you guys, definitely. Yeah, looking at the lineup, I think I think Hactar's probably the hardest matchup because I played um, I played Hactar at the German team bowl and yeah, he's a, he's a very strong player and very experienced um, uh, tournament player as well. So, but other than that, I think I think Wales are even or slightly ahead in in, in every other matchup. Mm -hmm. Yep. Three whales in this one. Yeah. So is that Good. is that three whales and then Andy yeah. Andy going for a draw? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I'll play for a draw in this one. That's fine. Um, I'll get the, team, the team will carry me over. It's fine. Perfect. And we've also learned that seventy-seven um, matches played for a race is the cutoff. So I think we've learned a lot about this uh, match. <laughs> that yeah, that's the point at which statistical significance kicks in. Uh, okay. We'll get Sam to make a spreadsheet. We'll do a spreadsheet. <laughs> Show that tipping point. So who have we got left? Three games left. Switzerland against Spain. Now, Spain for me is also a funny one because they should they should be challenging every year based on the strength of their community and the players that they've got but again maybe a bit like germany they, they seem to fall a, a little bit short uh sometimes um so going through the matchups we have mad mats undead against duke luther van hawks dark elves fifo's orcs against dark duke's norse seepers dark elves against i'm not even gonna have a go at that one uh Necromantic. <laughs> Otis's humans against Belluduccio's Lizardmen. Strider 84's Wood Elves against Kewan's Undead. Uh, Keithor's Lizardmen against Malas Noticias humans. Latrol's Dwarves against Don Pipon's Wood Elves. And Jacaro's Necromantic against Idroch Skaven. Tasty matchups in there. Joe, what do you think? Yeah, um, lots of interesting things about this. Switzerland and Spain are two of the, the strongest teams outside of the top three or four. So you're looking at sort of um, five or six, so four, yeah, five or six of these two teams, you would think. Um, so it's going to be a very tough uh, draw for them both in the first round. Very interesting. Um, Switzerland have got some very, very experienced players. Keith Thor, um, Jakiro, Strider, some real like stalwarts of this team for the last decade or so. Um, 
Spain are fascinating because I think they play more NAF games than any other country, um, even France. Um, but somehow wow. they don't seem to have the um, don't. I don't know whether they don't uh, care about Euroball or whether they have their own internal pulse going on, but they, they don't seem to um, approach it in the same way as sort of the Italians and the English. I'm not sure. Or maybe it's just been bad, bad luck. I am don't know. But yeah, we went to um, the Bali Cup uh, this year in um, in the Basque Country, uh, which isn't Spain, but it's close to Spain or maybe in Spain, depending on your politics. Um, and they've got some really good players. Yeah, we play some good games. So uh, anyway, if, they, if they bring their best eight players and Spain are going to, you know, their dark horse and another dark horse. I seem to have a few of those. But yeah, they are, they've got some good players. They've got a lot of depth as well, haven't they? Oh, yeah. there's, a, there's some really cracking Spanish players in the European as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, terrifying. Worth look, looking at their win rate, actually. I've just been scouting around the spreadsheet and um, they are, the red column where you've got the played and the actual rating, um, that's all in the high 60s pretty much and mm. so they'd be a terrifying team for the top three to play they definitely yeah. can win any yeah. round it's whether yeah. or not they can put that to be you know, can they get a nice favorable draw um and put to get put to bed the teams that they should be and then they'll play one or two of the top three win those games they can win the tournament they are absolutely a team that can win it yeah yeah definitely they but um duke luthor is and uh don Pimpom over 70 percent global win rate and that that's big numbers that's when you start to go oh okay what's going on here so yeah that's interesting i think as well they're really good uh specialists uh for their race so all of them uh with the races that they're taking to euro bowl all have uh, a 70 percent or greater win rate apart from two guys and well 66 gets a little bit close. Yeah, um, 75 yeah, games is still a pretty good effort for 80%. Or whatever, wasn't it? Yeah. And then I was looking at the two that didn't have. So we got a couple of guys in the 50s. And basically it was because the event means that uh, a couple of players don't get to play with their favourite team. Um, okay. They were basically sort of the best of the rest. So the only reason we've got two guys in the blue column uh, for Spain that are below 70% is simply because they were shifted on to away from their favourite race. But if they could pick their favourite race, they would have been uh, 70 plus as well. So, very, very strong players. So, what do we feel about. Yeah, very tough game. What do we feel about Switzerland <clears throat> versus Spain? This feels to me quite close. Oh, this is too tough, to call, too tough to call for me. They've both got some very, very good players. Um, maybe leaning towards Spain because they've got the strength and depth. All eight, all eight chairs looking pretty good. But yeah, they're. Switzerland can win. They've got a number of players who can win against anybody. So, yeah, it's going to be a great round. Yeah, I think I lean towards Spain partly because of some of the matchups as well. Like the chap using Norse, Norse against the Orcs is quite good, I think. And then the Wardells playing the Dwarfs. I'd, yeah, I'd probably go like 5 3 in Spain's favour. Yeah, Spain have got Lizard Men versus the Swiss Humans as well, which is that's just a horror matchup for humans. Yeah, although well, that's mirrored back again, Lizard Men humans. Oh, yeah, sure the other way as well so it's, yeah like you say it's going to be really tight but but the Spanish could really set a marker couldn't they in the first round with a big yeah, one absolutely. yeah I'm going to go with the Swiss oh, oh I like it I, I like the chocolate so um, <laughs> that's what I'm going for yeah. they do they do actually bring chocolate they did it in Sweden didn't they they brought some chocolate coins to give to everyone yeah they gave people coins to use as their real markers when they yeah. played don't even in the first half because the second half gets harder <laughs> <laughs> so before we move on to the final two matches it's completely on property so dan doesn't know i'm going to do this um dan uh you host a podcast the double skills podcast don't you i do and your sidekick J bone sometimes is along as well yeah is he, is he about to walk in behind me wasn't he no, 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 that's not, it's, not, it's not, this is your life. Um, do you want to do a quick, uh, a quick promo? Yeah, so we are a Midlands-based podcast, um, and we chat a lot of shit for up to three hours, and you can listen to all of that in one go if you want, for free. Um, so it's the Double Scores podcast. We 
for put, um, try and get podcasts out every couple of months or so, although we've both been busy bodies over this summer, so it's not so much. But we're going to do one in a couple of weeks after um, Spiel, Essen Spiel, because we're going to talk about the new team release as well. GWS <coughs> are bringing out the next team then. And we'll also be talking about Euroball a lot. So if you want to hear about how we got on in the European, that is the place to look. So we'll post a link to that. It is the least worst podcast. So uh, <laughs> I'm being afraid for you there, that's, everyone out there. I think that's the nicest thing you've said ever, Joe. Pretty, Pretty much. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. We'll, pop a, <laughs> we'll pop a link to the podcast in the chat in, okay, um, in just a second. Uh, I do want to know, how long did it take you and Jay Bone to practice your last intro, which was horrific? Um, there were probably five or six takes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. We well, got quite drunk. It was a Friday night one. That, yeah, it was a good, that was why it was a good short episode. I won't traumatise the people watching. Uh, if they, don't, <laughs> they can go and uh, go look at it themselves, listen to it themselves uh, when we link it in a moment. So moving on to another one of the uh, top three in the next round. It is England against Norway. And I think it's fair to say it's about time someone beat England, isn't it, Joe? <laughs> um, I'd be quite happy if they, we didn't do that again this time. Okay. So just for the I people, don't mind winning. So for the people <laughs> who don't know, England, um, it's getting a bit boring now. England have won four of the, have, England have won the last four Euro Bowls. Um, and five out of the last six uh, to put them on a total of six wins. So they've been pretty dominant uh, this decade. It's been close a few times, um, but uh, they found a way. Lycos is back as captain. So, Joe, do you want to take us through your team? Uh, yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, so, uh, first match is Nippy Long Scars Dwarves versus Great White Hope on Undead. And we've got Jim Jiminy, is the one of one on Wood Elves against Endlos on Orcs. Uh, then Captain Lycos, Necromantic against Minoc, again, Necromantic, mirror match. You've got Gegster, Paul Geg, on Amazons, who's going to be one of the featured games, I think, uh, with Dan on Tackle Zone, uh, versus uh, Barmushin on Humans. We've got Pete W on Dark Elves versus Straum on Dark Elves, mirror match. Purple Geese Humans versus Ref on Skaven. Uh, some idiot called Jumanji versus Zulu on Lizardmen. I've got them dead, me as usual. Uh, and then Pippi on Lizardmen versus Bothan on Wood Elves. So how are you feeling about the uh, matchups? There's a couple of tricky ones in there. Yeah, racial matchups. Um, I, we don't think we've come out particularly well. Uh, I think they're just about as bad as you can get um, with these particular teams against each other. But got to be confident and you know play our normal game and uh, see what happens so perhaps the most striking thing is when we look at the total number of games played Norway as a team have 729 and England have uh, five players who have more than that by themselves yeah yeah, I was actually looking up um, a stat earlier, uh, which I quite liked, was that England have got five players with 800 or more NAF games played, and the other 21 Eurobowl nations have only got four players between them that have played 800 or more games. Wow. So I think that goes to show some of the experience that the England team's got. I think mean, I guess that's why we do all right, because we're all idiots who've got nothing better to do than play Blood Bowl. But yeah, yeah there's a few of us that have played a bit too much. That's an incredible statistic. I think I've played maybe a hundred and something games, hundred and twenty, um, and I feel like I've played a fair bit of tabletop. To mm. take that and increase it by nearly a factor of ten is just mind. Yeah, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, I do like some of the the matchups there. Um, Endelos, uh, who's playing Orcs for Nor uh, Norway, normally plays uh, Wood Elves, so mm. uh, he is playing the world number one. But I think. He should know all about Woodell, so I'm interested to see how that one plays out. Yeah, Ed Loss um, is a good player. I've played him. He's, uh, he, you know, along with Stram, he's probably uh, their two best in Norway. So, yeah, it's uh, that's a tough game for Jim. I know he doesn't like Orcs particularly either. So, yeah, interesting one to watch out. Yeah, I think the Pete W. Stramy game probably plays out as a draw unless weird things happen in the dice. Because mm -hmm. if you're playing to not lose, you both think both teams should be capable of scoring on turn eight. Yeah. Uh, that one's okay. Um, 
Purple Goose, um, Human Skaven, that could be an interesting one. Goose, just such a good player. Such a good player. I think I think I favour him on that one. Yeah. Um, um, what else? Here. Yeah. The the chat just asked about um, whether or not uh, they think that Pippi with his uh, lizard men uh, can beat the Wood Elves, assuming that he's gone for the two tackle. Uh, what do you think, Joe? I don't. I don't hate that game. Um, it's it's the traditional bogey game that people always talk about. But if you look at the numbers, there are worse games. For example, um, you know, lizard men are better against chaos dwarves than uh, Wood Elves are against lizard men, and that's not a game that anybody talks about. So it's not, you know, it's a bad game, you know, but it's not, it's not unwinnable. Yeah, yeah I think I when, I, when I started playing Lizard Men, I had a huge amount of trouble with Wood Elves. I think the first time I played them, uh, it was like turn four of the second half. I was 5-2 down. I didn't really know what was going on. And one of the referees came over and called it on time, but I think it might just have been a mercy killing. <laughs> Uh, but then you, you play it more and more, you figure out some tactics because you have to play very differently against them. And, and actually, um, it's not too bad if you know what you're doing and you've got some experience. There's, there's some good counterplay options. Yeah, it's one of those things, um, games in Blood Bowl, where you have to kind of learn it a bit. You have to learn the matchup. There are, there are a lot of games that just sort of, that you play themselves, you play your normal game the way you always play, um, regardless of the opposition. But there are certain particular matchups you just have to learn a specific different tactic for. And no. yeah, um, there's other ones. Zulu's in the chat, so your uh, Joe, your opponent is actually here now. Hi, Zulu. Um, do you want to give him a little? Uh, what, what do you think about that matchup? Um, I don't like Lizmo particularly with Undead. I think that's one of the ones I don't like uh, very much. Um, but you know, I think at the last year of Bob, I think I got over a hump a little bit with it and started to, to work out the strategy a bit more against good players with listen men. So, you know, I'm going to put that into practice and, and see if it works. Good. And the other, there's two other games I think I'm just talking about. Um, Gegster's Amazons versus Barmutian's Humans is the first one for me. Gegster is an absolutely phenomenal coach for that race. Um, mm. But Barmutian definitely needs to not be underestimated. The last time I played him, he beat me. Um, okay. And I don't, I, if I was the humans there, I think I quite like that because you're probably running a tackle. You've got mm. just as much guard. You're armor eight versus armor seven. Um, I think humans can do stuff in that matchup. Yeah, yeah. played well. Humans, um, you know, the stronger. Um, they've got more as much guard. It's definitely an interesting game. But you know, Paul is such a good player with Amazon. It's just it's nonsense. Yeah. You know, he's, he's beaten chaos doors at Euro Bowls with Amazon. So he's he's. Yeah, he's, he's, he's very good. Um, and I think the only one game we haven't really talked about is Nippy's game um, against Great White Hope. Now, I, I had the pleasure of sitting next to Nippy um, earlier this year, I think it was, and I was the grumpiest git ever because it was so <laughs> hot. We were in this room and it must have been 30 degrees. And I was just not a, not a happy man. And I was I re looking back on the, re the tournament, I respected how cool he was just able to just be chilled. He must be such a nice person to have in the team. <laughs> To, to yeah. keep everyone calm and focused and not get run away with themselves. He's such Mark a is one of the, the nicest men you're ever going to meet. It's a uh, pleasure to play alongside. Yes. So yeah, he's uh, he likes that game actually. Um, undead of the tier tier one teams, which is interesting because as the undead as the undead player, I quite fancy dwarves. So yeah, it's interesting that Mark has a different perspective on that. But yeah, looking forward. To yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So, but. Um, Oh, taking the right match overall, I think England are probably the favourites for that, um, as I think you're going to be favourites for most matchups. Um, but it's a game, like say, a, a matchup. I think you guys are going to have to respect because otherwise Norway could have, could could steal. Yeah, absolutely. They've got they've got some proper players on that team, and you know, if the good players play well and a couple of other um, games come on stuck, you know, anything can happen. So yeah, yeah. respect our um, opponents as always. Yeah, I think this might be one of the. The benefits of the new system, where the the kind of the team win is more important than the individual score, because I think mm. Norway, one of those teams you wouldn't really want to face in the old scoring system, because even if you get the team win, two or three players in there could easily beat you and yeah. just chip some vital vital points off. And given that often a tournament can be won by just half a point, yeah, uh, can make all the difference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, speaking of that half a point, there was a, a fantastic 
um, or terrible for the Italians in the, the last year ball um, in Portugal winning the one um, where one of the Italians forgot to score in his turn 16 so he oh, literally had to walk in and then just no. moved his turn counter along and then didn't score and his opponent didn't spot it in time and so he, he didn't win the game and that was the point that stopped them winning the tournament wow wow so yeah we won by half a point and if that had gone the other way that would sort of one point swing so it would have been just Italy rather than England wow oh my lord oh that's it's like end end stream we should have ended the stream on that <laughs> no, that was so to end the stream on <laughs> how, oh, I hope how do we recover hope from that uh, Joe's got a better story after that I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what <laughs> yeah. you can top it with I should have oh. saved that now we've got one more match haven't we oh no we've got Denmark the time of the round she has to be the yeah story. absolutely so before we move on to that, just a quick uh, note. Uh, Gexter is uh, currently on 996 NAF games. His 1,000th game will be the first game on the Sunday, which will be one that we are streaming on this channel. So if you want to see him take his Amazons into uh, his uh, 1,000th NAF tabletop tournament game, which is absolutely incredible, uh, please do watch us here. Um, so where's, where's Norway going to finish overall? Because um, they tend to finish sort of middle field. Third. Can they do third? <laughs> yeah. yeah, top half, I reckon. Yeah, maybe maybe tenth. Yeah, definitely. Guess. Top ten. Look at 22 teams this year. Yeah, definitely. Excellent. So now for the big one of round one and it was the it kind of spoiled the excitement of the live draw yesterday having france versus denmark out as the first one because you're like well that's all the excitement gone immediately <laughs> yeah, that's it. i don't know actually um i don't know about you joe i was quite pleased to see those two draw each other because it was only england yeah. to avoid yeah. at that point yeah, i didn't think <laughs> <didn't laughs> too much actually yeah so, uh, France versus Denmark. We were hoping that uh, Gannathil might have arrived already. He's the uh, French uh, captain. Uh, we just had a, a little bit more <clears throat> delaying tactics to build this false cliche drama. Uh, I'll just hand over to Andy for a moment. Andy, as I said, was... Um... I'm about to get a visitor, sorry. Oh, yeah, hi. You said Woo! it was going to be like a, the... Uh, it is going to be like that North Korean bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just need someone to come in and... Russian <laughs> that, um, right, there's only me here so we've just been hanging out that's where I keep disappearing off to to make sure that he's still alive yeah, no, I'm not going to get well, in trouble okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean we're, I'm, I'm hoping you're not leaving him in too dangerous a situation yeah, that's, uh, no. valid valid um, so as I said well, uh, just pause with Andy for a second to talk about um, all the, the great streaming he's done on Twitch and his uh, YouTube channel so Andy would you like to tell us a little bit about that Oh, I, I thought it was another person called Andy. I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd, I'd say that we've been streaming for, uh, along with my co-caster, Zonk, for about just over a year now. It's going well. Um, we've started putting up some YouTube-only content, which is great. And it's all about the way that I think through games um, and I do some replay analysis. And in the replay analysis games, I will point out what I think um, the opponent could have done better, but also where I think I've gone wrong and sort of how younger Andy could have played a, a better game. Um, and um, I, I'm quite open to some um, some feedback. I'm just going to see if I can find one. Here you go. Here's the, here's the latest offering, um, if you don't mind me linking this into the no, chat. No, please do. Please do. While you do that, I was just going to say, um, I've actually used one of your uh, replay analysis videos uh, for one of the tactics articles on the Tackle Zone, because one of the things... I think a lot of players do when they're not especially experienced is it's very easy just to blame bad dice. It's like, oh, if I just made that go for it there, I would have won. Whereas the really good players aren't having to make that go for it at all. And so to see kind of your honesty, which is it's quite hard for the old ego to look back at games you've played and sort of rip your, your own play apart. But I think you do a really good job of going through and saying, no, I could have done that better. I could have done that better. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, there's... Blue members just said it's the best thing on YouTube. I don't know about that, but it's um, it's something you wanted to get for a long time. Good. I'm glad people are enjoying it. Um, I'd love to get it out to a wider audience. Um, we're normally picking three, four, five hundred views a, a video. Um, it'd just be nice to get more people um, and find out what people. But I mean, I'm enjoying making them. 
Excellent. And if all your uh, Blood Bowl 2 fans uh, want to see you do a tabletop game, you will be live on this channel, uh, the third game on the Saturday, which starts around uh, 5 o'clock. Oh, Blue Member 82 is raging at you too. Oh, quick. Uh. Uh, that's how we got past the uh, bots that I'd set up. <laughs> I think, Raging, you've said a, made a uh, couple of comments, I think, actually. So, uh, thank you very much. So, here we go. Here's the heavyweight match. France against Denmark. What a round one tie. So, we have... Mm. I mean, there's there's no weak games here. It's mental. Correct, Lizardmen against Mr. Cappuccino's Dwarves. Clemento's Wood Elves against Miss Sweden's Necromantic. Zool's Humans against Jack Lizard Lizardmen. Simon ACP's Pro Elves against Special Ones Undead. Uh, live on this channel, first thing on Saturday, will be BB's Undead against K Foods Wood Elves. What an opener that will be. Hearty's Dark Elves against Triple Skulls, Chaos Dwarves. Justicium's Necromantic against Topper's Dark Elves. And Slad Mortis's Chaos Dwarves against Tank's Amazons. Whew. What do we reckon awesome. there? I played uh, Simon and Clemonto on the Fumble there. Uh on the Euro Bowl build-up game, uh, fumble tournament, and got absolutely walloped in both matches. <laughs> it was horrendous. <laughs> but I just was curious in my look at drawing them both. Like, in, I think I drew Simon in round one and Clemente in like round three. Oh my but goodness. it's just it's it's awesome. It's it's exactly what it's all about, isn't it? From my this, perspective, this is a, a round that would grace the top table in round six quite easily. It's yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Game. Both teams have got so, so many good players. Like all eight players on a team, fantastic. Um, the French are always the team that England are most worried about. I think they've just got the, the problem is they can't fit all of their good players into the team. If the Euro Bowl was thirty man teams, France would win it every single year. Um, it's just a case of they having to rotate all of their players in to give them a go. Um, but yeah. Simon, BB, Slab Mortis has been out of the team for a few years. He is such a good player. So, yeah, it's very, very, very fun round. Yeah, I played Slab Mortis and uh, I was just sweating the whole way through that game. And about halfway through the second half, when it was clear he was playing for a draw, I have never been so thankful. <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh my God, I'm taking a draw all day long. Um, on that point, Joe, I think it's a really good point about not being able to fit all of their good players in. One thing I've noticed this year is... In terms of actual numbers of caps, this is actually quite an inexperienced French team in terms mm -hmm. of Euro Bowl playing for France, not overall, they're super experienced. But the racial ratings, Zool is the only player below 70%, and that's 68.3% with humans. Mm -hmm. This is phenomenal. Yeah. Also, you have to take um, French uh, statistics with a pinch of salt because it's so tough playing there. Yeah. So you need to almost add two or three percent to it just to compare it what it would be in another country. They, they, I mean, um, a lot of the English guys uh, go to France all the time to get good competitive games in. That's where we go if we want to get some real tough practice. So yeah, it's as you say with the other um, numbers in a vacuum or take on the pinch of salt. Again, you need to look at these and think, well, they're good for any country. But in France, these are ridiculous numbers. Dan, I think you found that at uh, test this year, didn't you? Yeah, it was fascinating. It was you hadn't got that um, natural submarining that you can do in a, in a British tournament most of the time, where you 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 play some better players and then you you sort of settle in in a, in a position. Whereas yeah, I think we, as we went into round three or four with the tackle zone, we were all sort of hitting really average numbers, but then still playing players with two hundred plus ratings mm. in the bottom half of the tournament. So, yeah. Was, and this is like a 200 man tournament as well so it was it was amazing but it was it's such a beneficial experience for me personally because of that in terms of, in terms of exactly what Joe was just saying about playing six games where you actually really had to think in all six of them yeah sadly yeah. Lutes is not on next year because it's a World Cup year but I definitely advise anyone that can get to Lutes it's a lovely part of the world uh, and some really great players and really cheap beer as well if that can swing it and the food is fantastic uh, <laughs> yeah. sorry Andy I cut you off there no I was just hoping them no, no never mind it's the mics picking up Emma's uh, not very happy just making oh. sure that it wasn't picking it up <laughs> okay good so I mean oh I can't I look at every single one of these games and I can't decide who's going to win it Mm. Are there any? Did you guys see any that even sort of favour one side or the other? 
Um, well, there are a few uh, racial matchups that um, favour somebody. Like Lizardmen versus Dwarves is pretty good in there. There's a chaos for, uh, uh, in favour of France. Um, Oh, well, if I'm dead, I'll, I'll be the undead every day there, please. Yeah, yeah but Simon has Simon. got his, his fruity, too dirty player pro. Yeah, first. that was what I played against in, in the fumble matchup that we had. It's horrendous. Yeah. He's got like a 13 man roster with two dirty players. Great. Simon has actually <laughs> swung me to the world of uh, fouling. I asked He's him. He's taken to... to the dark side, Dan, hasn't he? He has taken me <laughs> to the dark side. I think. In something like the 40 tournaments that I'd played in, um, up to that point, I'd fouled three times in total. One, <laughs> one was a bit of a grumpy I was going to lose foul, and two of them were against Roxana on the floor. So I think you know, anyone would take that. Yeah. Um, and then I spoke to Simon, and uh, Simon, and he said, um, yeah, take this, take this Norse team, um, no blitzers, one off because it has wrestle to get the guy on the ground and then just foul your way through the game. I'm now sitting on a 72% win rate with Norse. It's got to be broken if I can do that. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's horrible. I just like, it, it goes against all of my natural in instincts. I just, I just can't, I don't think I can play it properly. I think I just play a bad roster and just not dare foul. But um, <laughs> if you can embrace it, then it seems to work. Yeah, I think in the first one, I went like halfway. Um, this was at Lutes, and uh, he absolutely uh, shouted me out on it. He's <laughs> like, How, no, don't go halfway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, why? Why are you doing this? Um, yeah. And then, yeah, he, he captained our team for the Dorbali Cup, and uh, he was playing a Bretonian team with Griff, and mm -hmm. uh, he was watching my game more than he was watching his own game because he was so keen on these fouls going well. Um, and uh, game one, I didn't sit next to him. And games two through six, he made me sit next to him so he could watch the game. And then when England were playing Sweden in the uh, Football World Cup, um, he said that I should go and watch that and that he would play for me. So he was really keen to take on that team. Yeah, yeah speaking of like wanting to watch um, games, like I almost don't want to play my first uh, game. Yeah. I just want to watch this. Come watch these, yeah. Um, like spectating Blood Bowl is almost more fun than playing it sometimes because you don't get the you know, the angst of all yeah. the dice rolls possibly failing. But getting to just walk up and down this line of games yeah. for a couple of hours would be just delightful. It's great that um, food has, has drawn BB in the first round. What an amazing first stream for you, Dan. Yeah. So, Two absolutely lovely guys as well. Thomas yeah. uh, is a wonderful man. He played uh, with us once. We were, we were only a five English guy, so he joined... Uh, the English for um, a team in Toulouse, so he was a, a very welcome addition. And he was at the UKTC with us, wasn't he, for the uh, beard man incident? He was, oh, oh yeah, the infamous beard man. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you some of these stories over the, the weekend, guys, it's just, they go on far too long for now. Um, so, here's the tricky part, guys. Who... Oh, man. <laughs> Can I go first? Yeah. 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 Raw. <laughs> hey. I'd love a draw all day long. Yeah. <laughs> now we have Megatron on camera. <laughs> I am going to go with a France win 5 3. Ooh. I think, yeah. <laughs> well, probably a draw. I wanted to say draw, really. I was just trying to be less of a fence city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it's if it's not a draw, because otherwise we're all going to pick draw because we just we can't pick. You've got to um, back the French, French. Don't you? Yeah, it's the French. Um, Thoughts, Joe? Yeah. yeah, if you had to pick someone, you'd you'd pick the French, um, just because they're a little less strength and depth. Um, uh, a couple of the Danish people um, may may not be quite as good as their French counterparts, but they're still good players who can absolutely win the game. So yeah. I mean this could be I mean this could be a few dice here and there, it could be a blowout for either team. So it's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. What about that's gonna be the main thing is it's how they approach it initially because I suppose you could lose your whole weekend mm. if things go badly in this first round. Well I don't know at five oh one is still a um a potential 
tournament winning record so you know if you get absolutely thrashed you could find yourself getting uh, the submarine on so yeah it's interesting i, I do wonder actually because thinking like england norway um I, I would think that you guys probably yeah, are favorites but i don't think you're going to tonk them Mm -hmm. um, and France, Denmark is probably also going to come fairly close. There is a oh, serious yeah. chance that you four will end up playing each other <coughs> the following round. Um, but if we rewind a little bit further, Switzerland, Spain's not going to be a landslide. Yeah. Um, and therefore, one of the you guys could either run up into each other in round two, which could be really interesting. Um, mm. And you could also then have one of the lesser ra uh, lesser races, lesser nations, um, actually sat somewhere near the top. Yeah. Um, after the first couple of rounds because all the big guns are playing each other. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I think sort of flipping that on its head, there's going to be a very good team who just loses, just get edged out on the first round and then potentially having to meet a Denmark. I mean, losing your first round and then playing a Denmark or a France, that's, yeah. oh, that's going to be tough. That's going to break you. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of the the luck of the tournament comes in like sort of the round two and three draws because you're going to end up playing um, if you're an England or Italy or France, you're going to end up playing all of those teams anyway. So it's yeah. kind of like who you get in round two, like it's because it's completely random. Like you know, you could win four and a half, three and a half, and play somebody terrible, or you could win six two and then play someone good. So it's just complete yeah. lottery at that point. And you know, those rounds two and three are the interesting ones where you know you could get a great draw or you could you could real struggle. So that kind of moves us on to the tournament as a whole. Um, so top three, we reckon France is the England, but what order? I. Mm. So Joe, my, as my as my tiebreaker, I had gone for Team England. <laughs> You've got England as your <laughs> your but, best ball touchdown tiebreaker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all important. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I quite like the look of the of the Italians, you know. Well, we love it's to really, before, just depends actually, so massively on these draws, isn't it, in terms of uh, what happens. We talked mm. about guessing the number of touchdowns has actually been quite hard, but picking between Italy, France, and England—that's. Uh, that's I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick Sim Sweden to win it. Oh, controversial. Oh, oh, and the reason it. I've gone for it is because I, I do I keep looking at all. All eight of them are more than capable of winning their games. Yeah. And therefore, they should they should have the ability to break into the top three. And it would be, it'd be great to see someone random win it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Joe. But it, it would be someone, it would be That's good fine. to see a, a different team but win If it. someone else is going to win it, I would much rather it be Sweden. <laughs> Some rivalry, some, some old rivalries kicking in there. Ooh. Yeah, do a Leicester. Yeah, it's like Leicester. Win. Yeah, we're all fine if Leicester City win the Premier League. <laughs> yeah. As long as it's not. In terms, of, in terms of dark horses, then, would you? Who would you look at? Because uh, I guess the Spanish also. We, we've said already, haven't we? That. Yeah, I think I think we need, got to keep an eye on the Spanish. Um, I'm not familiar with all of their players, but if if they've um, you know, decided to have a crack at it this year, then, you know, there could be real challenges. Mm. We have someone in the chat. Special someone. Yeah, Hello, so, Ramaset. Hi, Ramaset. Hi, Galathil. Unfortunately, Galathil, we're just kind of uh, winding up to the end, but we're just making some predictions and we're talking about um, how we'd all like France to not win it. <laughs> we won't really. We think we think France. We think you've picked one hell of a French team this year. Um, I mean, it's hard not to pick one hell of a French team, to be honest, because uh, you have so many players. I think Joe, you said to me once that um, France probably have uh, the best eight coming into a lot of Euro Bowls, and then if you picked French players nine to sixteen, they'd probably be the second best team. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, you, you say that, and it's not an exaggeration. Yeah. They are there's so many good players. Um, so dark horses. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for Malta over Scotland for the hosting rights. I think they okay. have a good one. Um, well, that'd be great. But personally, I prefer that because you know I've been to Scotland. I haven't been to Malta, so yeah. Scotland. It's not gonna be like Ouija Bowl. <laughs> 
But um, yeah, because I, I was talking to the Maltese guys and um, they said they were talking to their uh, sports minister who's going to gonna help them out yeah. to, uh, That's to, awesome. to host Eurobowl if they were in hosting rights. So uh, it might be a nice cheap uh, cheap travel to uh, out well, Maybe we can get onto Nicola Sturgeon or whatever and uh, help with the Scottish bit. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Ali, have you have thought of that? Ali, Ali, go on to Nicola Sturgeon. See, see, see what money she can throw Eurobowl away. They some money painting that bridge they always paint in. Um, <laughs> yes, they can do without that for a year, surely. Stop painting the bridge. Surely. Give it to Eurobot. <laughs> so, Andy, a bit like you, I probably don't have quite as high hopes as Sweden has to actually win it, but I wouldn't be surprised if they make top three, especially because the draw can be a bit bouncy. If you, if you lose round six, you can end up a bit further down. If you have a good round six, you can end up a bit higher. Wouldn't be surprised to see Sweden top three. Everyone's nodding silently. I was hoping that was a little bit more controversial than that. Um, I reckon, I reckon I'd, I'd like to see top three Spain, um, Norway, and uh, Sweden. I think you're talking about Jive. I think it's going to be England, Italy, France. I think Andy's, <laughs> I think Andy's, <laughs> Andy's, <laughs> I think Andy's <laughs> obviously done some uh, demographics analysis of where his Blood Bowl 2 streamers are based. Pandering <laughs> <laughs> to the audience. Maybe a little. Um, Poland, so we know the, the Polish in other Games Workshop games, uh, such as 40k and uh, Age of Sigma, they're very, very passionate, very, very strong players. Since the re-release uh, of Blood Bowl uh, 2016, they've come on strong as well. Um, I would be surprised if they finished top five either. Okay. And in terms of the... Um, Zulu just mentioned that Hungary are going to be going for hosting rights as well. Okay. So, oh, right. Excellent. Brilliant. Brilliant. So it's a three-way fight. Oh, good. So, that's so good. Yeah. It? Does that make it three ways or four ways? It's four. So Ireland, Scotland, Malta, Hungary. Ireland aren't going to... don't know if Ireland... Uh, I don't think Ireland can, can they? Too Irish much, enough. Too much drinking. <laughs> Uh, well, no, they're technically in the hunt, is all I meant. They are in the hunt. <laughs> I, think, win it? I think technically, under FIFA parentage rules, they do have six <laughs> Irish uh, Yeah, uh, that's a problem. Do they qualify? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think they just about get that, maybe. Would Norway qualify for hosting rights, or are they not trying to host it? Um, I don't think they want to because of how expensive it is over there. I think they've oh, okay. put themselves forward. I, I, I went last year and... Um, I'm still paying the loan off. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, it, was, it was 15 quid for a pint of beer. Yeah. It's, it's, it's... So, yeah, Zulu, Zulu there's a lot chances. of beer drunk at Eurobowl. So that, uh... There is. Uh, Zulu and Chances Ireland are not eligible, so it may be, maybe just a three way between. Zulu is on the committee, so he would know. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. I'd be well up for a trip to Budapest. It's, it's beautiful city we went this yeah. year. Absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. So awesome. Zulu, if um, if Scotland getting into controversial territory here, if Scotland don't win hosting rights this time, are we are we going to keep That's going? It. Are we going to keep going to Scotland get hosting rights, or are we going to reset the clock? We, we have <laughs> we have passed uh, an official ratification in the last um, meeting, so there are actual rules for when it changes. Oh, really? So the answer the answer to your question is no. It will keep. Keep going until there's nobody left. Oh, right, okay. The ones there. Yeah. So we need new nations every year. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got Greece, they could, they could uh, win hosting, maybe. We don't know the Greeks. Maybe they've got some uh, sharks, the BB2 sharks on their team. Yeah. Or you're going to yeah. Athens 2021. Well, that's it. The stats only tell half the, half the story. Let's see the charter. Cool. So, I think, um, so we've run for about an hour and a half now. I think we're about ready to wrap this up, unless you guys had anything else you wanted to mention. I don't think so. Good job, Dan. Thank you for hosting us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you. Thank comments. you guys uh, for coming along. And uh, once again, big thanks to Andy Davo for making this all possible for his technical assistance. It's really appreciated. Um, so, uh, just to wrap up there, guys, uh, the next time uh, you'll see the stream will be Saturday morning. Um, so, tomorrow uh, I'll be heading up to Cardiff to help the guys up on the Friday, get all the webcams sorted. And then, um, if you're 
joining us in Eurobowl. The venue is open uh, Friday evening, but I think there's also some plans to head out uh, on the town, pretty much wherever it might be uh, loudest. Obviously, we'll have all the European guys joining us as well. So that's uh, just shy of 400 people in total, I think, descending on Cardiff uh, this weekend. And then the Saturday morning, uh, we'll start um, about an hour before the first games kick off uh, with a preview show. Unfortunately, Loinster uh, won't be able to join us, so I'll rope some other poor mug in to uh, sit alongside me and talk rubbish for an hour whilst we get the oh, games I can help sorted. you with that. I know Perfect. someone who'll be there who can uh, talk rubbish with you, so that's fine. Oh yeah, I mean, they're blood bowlers. We're not going to be short people who can speak rubbish. It's whether they can speak. <laughs> Speaking after the Friday night is what I'm more worried about than the uh, than the rubbish side of it. Um, and then we're straight into our first game, which will be uh, K-Food against BB. What an opener. That is, um, that is unbelievable. What a game. Um, and then um, we'll have a short break for lunch. And then in the afternoon, we'll have uh, Simon ACP from the French team. So uh, if they win, they could be up against potentially England or uh, Italy or uh, some other strong uh, team. And then we've got Andy Davo uh, just above me, uh, who will be representing Wales in the Saturday evening game. Uh, we have Gexter for England Sunday morning and then two more games on Sunday before uh, the closing uh, ceremony. We'll also have some assistance from the Reeble and also Stolen XP who will be handing over to you in the evening. Thanks very much for coming along, guys. Uh, you can catch uh, the coverage on Twitter um, uh, at the Tackle Zone BB. Uh, but for now, um, goodbye, everyone. Thanks for hosting this. Nice one. Cheers, Dan. Bye. Bye. Bye.